Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the steps to drawing a Lewis structure, which is sometimes also known as Lewis dot structures. Just quickly, if you missed our previous video on the introduction to Lewis structures, I recommend that you check out that video first before watching this one. So just click on that link in the top right hand corner of your screen now or in the description of this video to do so. So, as we established in the last video, Lewis structures are a model for us to visualize what the valence shell of an atom, ion, or compound looks like, and how it will react in the presence of another atom, ion, or compound. So, in this video, let's talk about the steps to draw a Lewis structure. To walk through this, let's pick a compound as a working example. Let's pick something we exhale every day with carbon dioxide, CO2. Our first step states that we need to total up all of the valence electrons in our system. So, just as a reminder, for a quick trick to remember how many valence electrons a given atom has, in groups 1a to 8a, we simply look at the group number. So, on our periodic table, which looks something like this, we have carbon in group 4a and oxygen in group 6a. Carbon has 4 valence electrons and oxygen has 6 valence electrons. Therefore, when adding up all of our valence electrons in our compound, we have 16 valence electrons that we need to place. Now that we know how many electrons we have to work with in this problem, in step two, we need to decide which atom is going to be our central atom. This is a step that a lot of students get hung up and confused on, and I will make a separate video for this in the future on how to choose a central atom. So don't get too frustrated on this idea just yet. It'll come with much more examples. However, as a general rule, it is often the atom that can make the most number of bonds and is the least electronegative. Electronegativity is just an atom's ability to hog a shared pair of electrons. But again, we will talk about that more in depth in a future video. So, firstly, we look at the electronegativity and carbon has a value of 2.5 and oxygen has a value of 3.5. Therefore, we suspect that carbon is our likely candidate for the central atom. Additionally, since carbon can form four bonds, four unpaired valence electrons, and both of our oxygens can only form two bonds each, two unpaired valence electrons each, this just further confirms our theory that carbon will be our central atom. So, let's place carbon in the middle here and our oxygens on either side. And as you can see, I am drawing the Lewis structure of each of these atoms now. Now, in step three, we need to build our initial covalent bonds to connect all of our atoms in our compound. This is essentially connecting all of our atoms as our outer atoms will share electrons with our central atom. So, these non-paired electrons from carbon and oxygen will form a covalent bond connecting these two atoms like so. Next, in step four, we need to ensure that we satisfy the octet rule for all the atoms that require it. If you are unsure which atoms the octet rule applies, I will leave a link in the description so that you can know which atoms abide by the octet rule. So, since carbon and oxygen both abide by the octet rule, we need to ensure that each atom in our Lewis structure has eight electrons in its valence shell. So, we can move these lone electrons on each of our atoms to form double bonds with the central carbon. Now, let's ensure that we are not violating our octet rule or added or removed any valence electrons, since we still should have the same number that we began with, which was 16 valence electrons. So, let's first count the number of valence electrons in our system to make sure that we still have 16 valence electrons. Just remember that each of these lines, that is, each covalent bond, is actually two electrons that are shared between the two adjoining atoms. So, counting our valence electrons, we have four on our leftmost oxygen in these two lone pairs, plus four in the two covalent bonds here, another four in the rightmost covalent bonds, and lastly, four in our two lone electron pairs on the rightmost oxygen. Therefore, we have 16 valence electrons, which is the number that we found in step number one. And this is good, we get the same number as we should. Next, let's validate all atoms that need to obey the octet rule. This left oxygen has four electrons in our lone pairs and shares four electrons with the central carbon. Therefore, it holds eight valence electrons and obeys the octet rule. The central carbon shares eight electrons with the bound oxygens and therefore also satisfies the octet rule. Lastly, this oxygen on the right is the same as the one on the left and therefore satisfies the octet rule for the same reasons. Although there are exceptions to Lewis structures, and many real compounds are much more complicated than our simple CO2 here, I hope you enjoyed this video and it helped your understanding of Lewis structures. 
In the coming videos, we will be completing many more examples of Lewis structures, so if you're at all confused, I recommend you continue to check out those videos, and it'll hopefully complete your understanding. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and consider checking out our YouTube memberships by clicking that join button down below. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.